You're listening to the Warrior Rulebook Podcast with me, Monique Harmon. I love helping people express themselves, protect their peace, and be confident in being them. You may also know me as Pretty Niki, who started her online journey as a modest fashion blogger. Now I'm an entrepreneur. You'll see through my experiences and the experiences of others that change is possible, improvement is tasty, and meaningful connection is transformational. Come on, share your story with me. Welcome to another episode of the Warrior Rule Book Podcast. Today, I'm with a very special guest. Her name is Michelle Blue, and she is an entrepreneur, coach, and talk show host. Blue is committed to helping others create the life and business of their dreams through her talk show, The Journey with Blue, where she leads conscious conversations about the spiritual, success, and mindset principles needed to step into your purpose to make your dreams a reality. Blue has sat down with the nation's leading entrepreneurs and thought leaders. As a trained life and business coach, Blue consciously supports entrepreneurs who are stuck and ready to get into action to create a purpose-driven life and business. In her signature coaching program, Take the Leap with Blue, Blue guides entrepreneurial dreamers to gain clarity in their vision, strategic plan, and confidence to get out of their head and take meaningful action to create the impact and money doing what they love. Blue has been recognized by 2190 as one of the 11 top coaches to follow and by Black Women Hustle as one of the top 20 Black women entrepreneurs to watch in 2022. She has presented a TED Talk, How to Break Free from Your Plan and Let Your Vision Guide You, spoken at conferences for Essence and CultureCon and has been featured on the CW South Florida and the CW Fourth Worth. So without further delay, let's bring on Michelle Blue. Hi, Michelle. Welcome to the show. Hi, Monique. Thank you for having me. How are you doing today? I am doing great, you know, with a lot of movement to get here to be able to have this conversation with you. Yes, well, I'm so happy that you're here today. So I want to jump right in by saying how we know why people are afraid to fail because it's embarrassing. Sometimes people will say different things that are very discouraging and it kind of makes us want to kind of crawl back into our shell and maybe not come out for the next few months. But in your personal experience, how can somebody overcome that failure to chase their dreams? You know, money, um, you know, I obviously am a coach in this and I lead conversations in this, but I still struggle with it big time. <laughs> you know, the fear of failure, the fear of what other people are going to say, the fear of what other people are going to think, um, you know, to do it so publicly, to put yourself out there and to be vulnerable, to be seen, like, it's difficult. It's difficult. And I, like I said, I struggle with this myself. And so I don't expect people to just like automatically like not have these feelings and not have these thoughts. I think the biggest thing is, okay, we know that this is coming up for us, but how do we move regardless? Right. And so we'll still have the fear. We'll still have the self-doubt. We'll still, you know, worry about what other people will say. We got that. Like I struggle with that, but it's like, I still have to go. I still have to act. And so the issue is when you allow that fear to keep you in a place that's lesser than you, keep you in a place that you know is is no longer serving you, right? Keep you in a place that's smaller than your actual purpose and where you're actually supposed to be. Yes, I definitely can identify with that because I have had to learn how to filter out what people say because if I just focus on that, which is so easy to do, I won't make any progress. And I think my power comes by doing something different about it. So if I see myself failing, I'm like, okay, how can I change that? How can I make it better? Would Mm -hmm. you agree with that as well? Yeah. Um, Yeah, definitely understanding, 
you know, like you said, what do I do different? You know, how do you bring something special? How do you bring something different into the, um, into any room, anything that you're bringing to life? And I think that's really important to know and to understand is that you have something special that you're supposed to bring out into the world. And only Monique can do it the way that Monique does. Only I can do it the way that I do it. And yes, you're going to face the criticism, but it's like, I got this, you know, it's not going to look like what other people have done before. It may not look the way that he does it or she does it, but I know like who I am. I know what I bring. I got something special. I got a, you know, a sauce that nobody else can replicate. And you show up in that powerfully, even when you don't feel like it, because you don't always feel like it today. There were moments where I didn't feel like it, but it's like, okay, I commit it. I'm moving forward regardless. Yeah. So can you tell me now about the 40,000 failure? How did that happen? Yeah. So um, definitely a significant (laughs) failure in front of the world, right? So we talk about failure and what does that mean? Um, But I had my... a a business, my first business that I started immediately after college. And um, I owned a luxury scarf company where we we were helping um, girls in Ghana continue their education. So we sponsored tuition, books, supplies, and uniforms for them to, you know, for them to go through school. And long story short, we were growing the business, um, figuring things out, you know, the minor failures and getting back up along the way. Um, but we had some great successes as well. We were named Mashable's Top Life on Business is Changing the World, Southern Love and Beauty Awards, featured in Essence. Um, I did a TED Talk sharing my work. And so, um, you know, there were a lot of highlights that came out of that. But uh, we went through the significant loss. Long story short, our manufacturer had cheated us at a significant amount of our fabric. And it was project, a, a projected revenue of almost $40,000, which is a lot of money, you know? <laughs> I was in like my mid twenties at the time. So it was a hard hit and it was a hard hit financially, obviously, but also a hard hit to my ego of just thinking about, you know, if my business is a failure, does that make me a failure? Right. And so, so many times we go through so many stories of, in our head of what failure is, but it's like you truly get to define what failure is. It can be your greatest teacher. It can be your biggest defining moment. It can be your end. Right. But you get to choose that. And so uh, it took me a while to just kind of like regroup, recalibrate and figure out like, OK, well, what's next for me? What do I feel called to do um, and continue to do? And I decided, you know, there was still more in this purpose, still more in this calling. And from there, I took another leap, another bet on myself. Um, Yep. And I was just like, this is not going to be the end of me. And that's so powerful, just being able to try to come back from that, which you did, thank God. And so... um, something that I want to know as well, like since we both are plan A type of people, how was the failure different from what the plan was? Was it just that that company had cheated you guys out or were there other like red flags or things happening where you were just like, okay, what's going on pretty much? Yeah. And you know, Monique, I used to consider myself maybe a type A type person, you know, personality, Um, group but now I don't even know I think I'm more like I mean we all vacillate right we have a little bit of everything in us Um, so I can't even fully claim the type A but I think there were several things that you know we could have been a lot more mindful of Um, one one of the major things is like we had no clue what we were doing (laughs) You know, uh, we had started this and we had gotten to the point where we were doing international sourcing. So we were doing um, custom fabric, our silk production in China, which is like, what? How did you even figure this out? Like, um, pretty crazy. Yes, I would definitely like to know that. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, yeah, it was just kind of like, 
you know, um, making connections, having conversations, and one thing led to another. Um, and we had had several good runs with this manufacturer in China, but this one just didn't work out. And, you know, one of the things in hindsight, of course, hindsight is twenty twenty, was we should have invested in a coach, right? Someone who had the expertise in that area. But at the time, we felt like we didn't have the money. We felt like, oh, we can't afford a coach. We're paying, you know, all this money in the business and everything that we make goes back into the business. But not having a coach, not having someone, the right person who can guide you, who can give you insights will end up costing you more money in the long run and more time. Right. And so that's another reason, you know, why I support people now in this in this space for 10 years is I know what having the right person by your side, the right feedback, the right accountability, the right guidance along the way can do. And it can be the game changer for you. Can you share a transformational moment for you or an experience once you had invested in a coach? Basically, so we can highlight how even if it's a scary investment of 5k or 10k into a coach, like what is on the other side of that investment from your personal experience? Yes, Mimi. And you know, I, I do invest a good amount um, in just like my personal development in general, because I'm like, I have to go to work on myself, not just my business, like me as in blue, you know? Um, and so with doing the personal um, development work that I invest in myself, I've been able to now start another business. I have an education consulting business, which is not in the forefront at all, but, um, you know, started that during the pandemic and have been able to grow that in less than a year to a six figure business with the New York City Department of Education being my main client, my main customer. Right. And again, didn't have any previous experience in this, didn't know how it was going to work out, but I believed in the information that I was providing, right? And so from the education consulting side, but even from the journey with Blue, how now I get to lead conversations with some of the nation's top entrepreneurs, people who like, you know, have been able to grow their businesses to $20 million, $50 million that I get to personally call up and ask them to be on the show, um, that I get to be able to provide that insight to my audience as well. And so um, my whole life has been a 360 because of the right coaching, because of the right support, because of the personal development work as well, which looks like therapy, which looks like, um, you know, even having working out consistently, right? Having a routine, it looks like journaling. So there's things that you can do from, uh, you know, obviously a coaching investment side, but there were also things that I just did in my my free time that didn't cost anything as well that supported me and given me a, a firmer foundation to grow and to grow faster than I did before. Yes. And that's so important, like not to always be working in your business, like glue to a laptop. It's important to get outside, get some fresh air and connect with people mm -hmm. because I think sometimes we can be so focused different business models out there or companies are saying you know you need to stay and focus on building your business you might have to miss birthday parties and gatherings and things like that and it's like sometimes you need those things in order to grow or, or give you a different perspective of something that you didn't or you weren't even aware of before so yeah. I think it's so important in this time to avoid burnout as much as we can, because it's going to be inevitable if you continuously just have that tunnel vision where you're just working on your business all the time. Yeah, you know, and that is one school of thought. And for, you know, so many years in the beginning of my business, uh, when I first started immediately after college, I was so into my business, like, you know, and I had to look up and realize there was life happening and business is just a slice of the pie. It's not life. And I really had to be more intentional about like, well, who 
do I want to show up and be? Who, how do I want to make people feel? Who do I want to be to my family? My mom, my dad, my brother, my nephews. Who do I want to be to my friends? Do I want to always be absent because like I have to focus and I got to get this done? Or do I want to be there for moments? Can I be there for everything? No, you know, that's not realistic, but I can be intentional with showing up with when I can and showing up like fully present when I can. Right. So, um, and there's different seasons for different things. Sometimes you do have to, you know, get a little bit more tunnel vision, but I do, I do know that being around people that love you, being able to like experience life and see new things, um, can just inspire you so much more can fill your cup, you know, so that you can, show up in your business better. Yes, definitely. So I, I'm going to approach this next question kind of with caution, but I kind of want to give people a sense, like how many mistakes do you, and you don't have to have the amount, the exact amount of number, but like how many mistakes do you experience either in your life as it relates to business or mistakes mm-hmm. that you have seen other entrepreneurs do? Because I think we need to definitely normalize this more. Uh, the mistakes. I make mistakes every day. <laughs> Same here. Pretty much, <laughs> pretty much. I mean, that's like mistakes in business. That's mistakes in life. Like I am not a girl who's going to sit here and lie, but like I have it all together that I have it all figured out. I am constantly learning so much and constantly having to check myself and, you know, to show up better or to, check what I'm saying to myself or whatever the case may be. Um, But yeah, so mistakes all the time. But if you are not making a mistake, then what are you doing? Then you're just there. You're just being the same you that you were yesterday. And so there's no growth in there and that there's no progress in that. And that just doesn't work for me. You know, like, I want to get uncomfortable. I want to make the mistakes because that means I'm going for something I've never gone for before. So true, because I think it's even more damaging like to stay stuck, because if you don't know anything different, you're going to have the same exact approach. And sometimes the same approach doesn't work with a different situation. It causes you to rise to the next level and it challenges you. How are you going to react? How are you going to respond to that? Mm-hmm. Definitely. Exactly. Yes. So I wanted to ask this question as well. Like, how can other coaches that may be out there, maybe I'm not sure if you also teach coaches in your program, but I wanted to know how can they increase their success rate? Because sometimes there are clients that might have every intention of finishing their program and they just get sideswiped by life and then either we don't see them ever again, or they just fall behind. So how can we retain our clients and encourage them to keep going? Like, is there a specific type of coaching framework that you might have that works for you? Mm -hmm. I was willing to know that. Yeah, so I don't coach specifically coaches, right? But I do coach coaches. So some people who are in my program are coaches, they're therapists, they, you know, are trying to grow their businesses, obviously, they may feel stuck, they feel like they may have created courses at so many times, and they never release them out into the world. Um, so those people come to me as well. So I can help you get out of your head and get into action to actually bring this to life. Um, so for me, you said, and your question was, how do you retain your clients, essentially? How yeah, do you get them to, encourage keep them to keep going. Yeah. So, you know, as you develop, you will have to, again, think about new programs and think about what is my customer's pain point once they get to this milestone. And then what's their next point point when they get to, you know, a different milestone and think about how can you serve them and add value to them along their full journey. But sometimes, you know, again, sometimes you're a coach for that season. Because if you're trying to help someone get to, I don't know, $50,000, $100,000, or, and they get to that, and now they're ready to get to 
the half a million mark and you've never reached half a million dollars and you just may not be that coach for them. And that's okay. Right. Um, so, you know, I also think, you know, being transparent with yourself, of like, well, how can I truly bring value here? And not just because I need the monetary exchange, but what can I truly do for you? And how can I truly move the needle for you? Yes, because definitely there are coaches that I listen to that basically say to make sure you stay in your lane, because when you start trying to go outside of your lane and try to help every single problem that your client has, you may make a mess because that's not your area. So I think I agree with that. I think it's definitely important just to stick with what you know and, of course, try to learn yourself. But certain things that that's not meant for you, it's meant like, hey, I can refer you to so and so who can mm-hmm. help you as well. So I definitely agree. Exactly. With that. Exactly. And that's totally OK, because there will be somebody else who's going to need you to get them to the mark that you are able to support them with. Mm-hmm. And there will always be more, right? So that's also a shift of mindset of abundance, like that I don't have to fight for someone, right? I don't have to um, not be in integrity of what I can actually do, what my skill sets are. The people that need me, there's an abundance of people that are going to need the services that you offer. Yes, exactly. So can you tell me of other than what I read in your bio earlier, what were some of the things that you are very proud of as a result of being able to overcome that 40,000 failure? Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, I was just thinking, um, because this is my 10th year of being in business and going Congratulations. (laughs) Thank you. And you know what, Monique, there have been a lot of things that have, you know, um, that I've been able to create and do in this time. Um, And so sometimes I have to take stock of actually like stepping back and like, like, wow, you did that. You know, sometimes we like take it so lightly of our own accomplishments. We can see it in other people, but we can't see it in ourselves. Um, So I think first, just taking stock of this journey and what I've been able to do um, and how I've been able to move and speak to people in this time, but also staying in it for 10 years (laughs) is the game changer and hasn't always been easy. I mean, yes, the, the significant loss, but like thinking about the day to day, what does that take to keep showing up even when you don't see the results? to keep showing up when no one else around you get gets it, you know, to keep showing up when people may be like, oh, you should get a job. You're not making the money. You're not, it's not hitting the way you want to. You may not be getting the views. You may not be getting the contracts. And when I say it is possible, if you stay in it, you stay diligent, you show up at your, at your best and allow, you know, I say God to move in it allow like change, allow the failure, allow the feedback, there's something beautiful on the other side of that. Yes, yes. So how or what qualities do you have that you recognize yourself that you're able to fight a problem head on that kind of corresponds to being a warrior? You got to be able to take the hit. You got to be able to take the hit and then get back up. And that's the biggest thing. Yes, because that some some hits, you know, you might be like, oh, I could brush that off. And other hits, you're just like, whoa, I, I'll see y'all next week. <laughs> yeah. And it, you will be uh, on the ground and you will be leaking. You will be bleeding, right? Yes. You can get back up. Yes, definitely. Thank you for that. So yeah. what do you have that's coming up for you? that you would love for my viewers to keep an eye out for? Yes, there's so many new things that's happening in um, my world. Um, so the Journey with Blue season four is coming this April, 2023, which is really exciting. And another amazing lineup of guests, um, amazing transformative conversations to help you powerfully step into um, your purpose, powerfully step into your dreams, 
Um, so that's really exciting. I definitely would love for you all to follow that journey. Um, watch on my on my website, thejourneywithblue.com or Instagram, thejourneywithblue um, or the Michelle Blue. And then also the coaching, right? So we have the conversations, but then it's like, that's just the beginning. It's time to get to work. It's time to actually like get into life and get into the world and make this happen. And that is what the journey with blue is all about. It's about the, yes, having the conversations, but they're actually like, let's make a difference. Let's make a change. So for people who are ready to create the impact and make money doing what they love, that's what I support you. Getting out your head, getting to action so you can get to the good stuff. Thank you so much for that. Thank you for being here today, Michelle. I had an awesome time. Yes, thank you for having me, Moni. Glad we were able to make this happen. Wow. Would you be able to come back from a $40,000 failure? Whew. That is a tough pill to swallow. But Michelle did it. So the next time that you make a mistake, don't be so hard on yourself, even if it's really big. Just try to keep it all in perspective and see how you can fix it. There may be some untapped power inside of you. Do what it takes to uncover it. Be a warrior and try again the next day. Thank you so much for tuning in to the Warrior Rulebook podcast. If you like what you heard, Share it with a friend and join me over at the Warrior Rulebook Podcast Insider Group on Facebook. And don't forget to follow me on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter for more tips on how to be resilient in this world.